our souls. So let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that is true. Spirit of God, we welcome you. Spirit of God, we welcome you. We welcome you, we welcome you. 
Worship the king. Have communion with him. Shut up, Katayaha. We need a touch from 
send unto you here another comforter, the Allos Paracletos. He is a help of your destiny. He will carry you and bring you to place of fulfillment. you have your way that Jesus be revealed in it all that Jesus be glorified you promised us strengthening this morning 
you promised us impartation of your grace this morning. I ask the Holy Spirit that you just go ahead and do that which only you can do. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Put those hands together for Jesus if you love him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to welcome everyone of us to church this afternoon. Thank you for coming. God bless you. And, and I, I, I trust the Holy Spirit to reach out to every one of us. And I mean individual visitation. Tell Lord to fit into that which you are believing God for. And I know he will do it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Unfortunately, pastor is not in service today. Second service, he was there in the morning. But he dashed out for another assignment. And God has, if you missed the first service, I would encourage you to go listen to the message. Please do. And as my father watched it before coming. I just want to make um, a bit more emphasis on uh, worship and wonder night. We really encourage, that's why I said the man that preached in the morning was more courageous than me because he was very emphatic. He said, don't stay at home and be streaming church programs. Say, come to church. I, um, I will receive that kind of courage one day and I will say it. So I'm quoting him. I'm not the one saying it now. I'm saying what was said in first service. So I want to encourage you to be here live. And if you have any family member, any friend that is believing God for a divine visitation, healing, an encounter, a situation that only takes God to turn it around, please come along with the person here. We're going to be in his presence for four good hours from 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. on Friday. God bless you as you agree with me not to stream online in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My courage is increasing. This morning, I will be sharing with us as part of uh, Focus doing great exploits. But I'll be sharing with us on what I captioned the impartation of the spirit for exploit. The impartation of the spirit for exploit. I don't know how you have enjoyed your work with God so far, but I have come to a conclusion, nothing can change my decision on that, that if the Spirit of God does not breathe upon us, we are wasting our time. It is by the empowerment and enablement of the Spirit that whatever thing we do here on earth can have record in eternity. Hallelujah. You know, we can actually, we can actually plan programs. We can actually be well organized. In fact, we can order our programs and our services and order the Holy Spirit outside the service. And we still hold service. And things, people will get excited. But at the end, there's no record for that in eternity. Until the Spirit of God breathes upon what we are doing. We're actually wasting our time. So I want, you to, I want to encourage you to please pay attention because... In the course of the message, it might get a bit personal and want you to take it that is God talking to you. Hallelujah. I'm just waiting for a release in my spirit. The Lord asked me to pray for a keyboardist. When I get the signal to pray for him, I will call him and pray for him. I don't know why, but God asked me to pray for him. Turn with me to the book of Numbers chapter 11. Numbers 11, I'll read 16 to 17 and jump to 24 to 30. And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee there. And I will take of the spirit which is upon thee, and will put it upon thee, upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee that thou bear it not thyself alone. And Moses went out and told the people, that's verse 24 now, and told the people the words of the Lord, and gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them before, round about the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him, 
if you read it with um, New King James Version and every other spirit, every other scripture, this particular spirit has a capital letter. Yeah, so it was not the spirit of man. It was out of the deposit of the spirit of God upon Moses. That was upon him and gave it unto the 70 elders. And it came to pass and when the spirit, okay, I go through verse 25 again. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the 70 elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad. The name of the other, Medad. And the spirit rested up upon them, and they were of them that were written, but went not out unto the tabernacle, and they prophesied in the camp. And there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Elder and Medad do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord will put his spirit upon them. And that ends with an exclamation mark. So great emphasis. And Moses got him into the camp, he and the elders of Israel. Hallelujah. Actually, from creation, this is about the very first form of ordination that ever took place. And the scripture said that the burden of the people, can you just increase the mic a bit for me? The burden of the people that Moses was bearing was becoming unbearable. It was what his father-in-law Jethro saw at some point and told him, can you just get people to support you in this work? You've been the judge of the people, but can you get them to support you? They will judge every other matter. When it comes to a matter that is very difficult, then they can bring it to you. So at that point, Moses you know, was now operating like a um, Supreme Court judge. So when they had handled that issue that are difficult for them to handle, they bring it on to Moses, and Moses will sort it out. And this continued. And the Lord looked at what Moses was going through and said to him, I want to help you and I want to make the body light for you. I want you to gather unto me 70 elders from all the tribes of Israel who have hitherto were called officers of the people. Bring them into the tabernacle and when I come to speak with you, say I will take off the spirit that is upon you and I will put it upon them. And Moses went and told them, this is what the Lord has said. So everybody prepared and came for that encounter. Child of God, the truth is that before now, they were acknowledged as leaders. They were acknowledged as people. But that quality that makes a man become a burden bearer was not found in them. Though they were called leaders. Though they were called officers. That's why God made that emphasis to Moses and said to him, so the burden is too much. I want them to help you in bearing the burden of the people so that you don't bear it alone. So it looked like a good arrangement. And God said to him, if I must commit responsibility that how to do with my people in the hand of any man, first thing must happen, I will put my spirit upon him. I cannot commit into an ordinary man the destiny of a generation, the destiny of my people, the destiny of people that are called by my name, if my spirit is not resident upon such a man. He said to him, bring them that when I, he was very specific, when I speak with you, I will take of the spirit and put upon them. It would be on that note that they would begin, they would be qualified to bear the burden of the people. So, Moses walked with people that in the sight of God, there was no way they could stand on the same platform was with Moses. Something separated Moses from them. 
something set Moses apart from them. It was the Bible that said, because that loveth righteousness and hates iniquity, the Lord, even thy God, has anointed thy head with oil of gladness above thy mates, above thy equals, above your contemporaries. It is by the anointing of the Lord that the separation mark comes upon a man. It is by the impartation of the Spirit of the Lord that God separates men from their equals. I want to steer a prayer burden in your heart to seek for this one thing that is able to set a man apart from his equals. They were recognized by the people, but in the sight of the Lord, the criteria to become a burden bearer was not found in them. And the Lord said to Moses, bring them unto me. When I come to speak with you, I will take up the spirit that was upon you and put it upon them. And Moses brought them to the tabernacle. And the Bible said that they were at the tabernacle waiting for the Lord to come speak to Moses. In my little experience in my work with God, one of the things I will not deceive you that sometimes you struggle to deal with is when God tells you, child of God, wait for me. Wait on me. He said to them, come, when I come to speak with Moses, the time for the meeting was not fixed. He did not say, I will visit you at 8 a.m. He didn't say, I will come to speak with Moses at 9 p.m. It was not specified when the master will come to speak with Moses. But if they must qualify to receive the outpouring of my spirit that will make them qualify to bear the burden of the people, they have to wait until whenever I decide to show up. And by Moses' record and by Moses' work, I'll give you a glimpse of it. You will know, that, that will give you an idea of how long they waited. Moses went to the mountain about five times. And each time he went to the mountain to receive something from the Lord, he always waited for how many days? 40 days. Now that gives you an idea. I can't say they waited for 40 days. But if Moses, who before then the Lord had found qualified, would wait for 40 days for God to come speak with him and give him instructions for the people, these other ones that are still going through recruitment process, I don't know how long they will have to wait. But I tell you something, child of God, if you must do that which will resonate in eternity, if you must carry the burden of a generation, if you must deliver a mandate from God to a generation, God must find you in the place of waiting. Sometimes, if I tell you it's easy to wait, it's never easy. You know why? Because the person that is asking you to wait can also decide not to show up. If you don't like it, go and hug transformer. It's your cup of tea. There's nothing you can do about it. Sorry, there's no transformers here. But you get what I'm saying. Good. If you don't like it, go and stand on M1 and tell the cars to be dodging you. Just stand at the center. It won't change who he is. He is sovereign in all his ways. The person we wait for is the almighty God. He's the one we wait on. We, we just stay and say, Lord, I don't know how long you want me to wait. But in the process of waiting, God begins to assess your motive, the reason why you are waiting. God begins to assess your plans after you have received what you are waiting for. In the place of waiting, God begins to assess the condition of your heart. And each, each one he assesses, he checks. Okay? He will deliver this mandate without looking for what will come to him. You know, one of the calls that is difficult to answer in ministry is the kind of call that most of us answered where what you are doing for the Lord, you are not expecting anything. As painful as that sounds, you are not expecting anything. 
you are consumed by your passion for the kingdom. Until we grow beyond the level where we begin to ask the Lord, if you call me, what will you give me? The call of God upon your life, it is not about you. It's about his people. Until we shift the focus, we are just conduits. We are just pipes that the grace will flow through. Child of God, I'm not the source. I can never be the source. All I need to do is to position myself well so that the, the grace can flow through me and get to the people of God. So God begins to assess your mindset. If I give him healing grace, what will he make out of it? Will he start selling bottled water? It's interesting we have to contain with a lot of things in Christian faith. But one thing I've learned about this church is, by the grace of God, you will hear the truth here. If I release healing grace upon him, water can heal. Handkerchief can heal. But you don't build a ministry out of handkerchief. I usually say it as a joke. When Samson grabbed the jaw of an ass and slaughtered the Philistines, what did he do? I would say he, he flung it away. He threw it away. If Samson was to live in our generation, we would have had jaw of an ass international ministry. I'm telling you. We will build a ministry around that. And everybody that comes to church will go by the jaw of an ass. Because that is what makes things happen. Materials don't make things happen. If there is no deposit of grace upon it, you are wasting your energy. I've seen someone that came in a meeting where I finished preaching, took the water that I drank while ministering, and drank of it, and came back and shared testimony of being healed of HIV. Should I go about distributing water and looking for who has HIV? Even though that will make a good business. Ha. It will make a good business and a good profit for me, but it is a terrible loss to the kingdom. So in the place of waiting, God begins to assess who you are to know if you can carry this grace. And the Lord said, when I come to speak with you, I will take up the spirit. So they waited until the day, until the moment, until the time he came to speak. Child of God, wait. He that will come will come. He will not tarry. God does not count time the way you and I count time. Wait on the Lord. Has the Lord promised you a grace that will take you to the nations of the world? Wait for him. Has God promised you a business? Has God made you an apostle in the marketplace where you disciple people in business, teaching them how to make money the godly way? Wait for him. He will show up. Do not run ahead of the instruction. You know why? When you get to your destination, you discover that there is empty. It might be too late to go back where you're coming from. Wait. Because the matter is a serious business. And it's so serious that we cannot afford to allow the master suffer any loss. We must wait until the grace is released. The impartation of the Spirit of God. It is by this that those men who are qualified to bear the burden of the people. Why do we need the impartation of the Spirit to do exploits? Why don't we just take off and begin to... You know, some people in the place of waiting, they, they, they wait and wait and wait and nothing is coming. They draw their plans and they take off with their plans. And suddenly discover that you're on your own. One of the things that waiting of the Lord, on the Lord does for a believer is that in the journey of life, when you can encounter difficulties and challenges and troubles and you face impossible situations, there is a voice that keeps speaking within you. He is with me. He told me to go. And if God tells you to go anywhere, God is actually waiting at the end of the journey to give you your badge. So the journey actually finished before he started. 
And that is why we must wait to run with him. So why we must wait, number one, a life without the fullness of the Spirit of God, as funny as that sounds, is a lifeless life. It is lifeless. Genesis 2 verse 7 says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. A man became a living soul. At the point when God finished the making of man, without the breath of God into the nostril of man, man was a dead soul. It was the breath of the spirit that did the translation from a dead soul to a living soul. So a life without the fullness of the spirit of God, without the impartation of the spirit of God, it's a life that the record you bear in eternity is that it is dead. And anything that is dead is unproductive. Anything that is dead abides on, its own. You're on your own. You are running your own show. You don't want deception from the devil. Devil tries to make people believe that um, there are substitutes to what God has called you to do. Where, where the call of God is involved, there are no substitutes. It's either you do it God's way or there's no other way. And if you try doing it any other way, God is not part of it. One of the instructions I love so much with, with, that God gave to Moses, is he was talking to him about the anointing oil. God said to Moses that, he said, this oil shall not be poured on any flesh. And he said to him, he said, do not make anything like it. Some translations use, don't use another formula to produce it. But we live in a generation where when the God thing is seem not to be working, it seems not to be working, we, we manufacture what looks like the God thing and begins to run with it. But God said, I don't, I usually tease people in music concert. I, I, it's a safe place for me. Yeah. I like making the environment look fine, good lightning, but don't try to replace the glory of God with smooth screen. They are not the same thing. Mm -mm. When the glory comes, everybody forgets there was smooth screen. You can't try to manufacture a supernatural thing to fit into a natural environment. No. It must be triggered. It must be sponsored. It must be, insp it must be inspired by the Spirit himself. Hallelujah. Now this message is sounding like I'm talking to pastors. <laughs> but every one of us is called for this. I am of the circumcision that every believer is a priest ordained by God to stand for a people. All you just need to do is to find out who you are called to stand for. It could be a family. It could be an, it could be an organization. It could be a church. It could be a ministry. It could be a marriage. I believe that the, 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 the head of the home is the man. But sometimes God puts priestly mandates upon the woman until the man comes to his senses. But before that comes, one person has to be the priest. Someone needs to stand in the gap. Someone needs to stand in the gap. So man was dead. Man was lifeless. Man was not productive. Man was useless at that point until the breath of God came upon him. You know, the, the real meaning of new creation was actually what happened in the book of John. John chapter 20 verse 21 where Jesus came to disciples of his. You could liken them to the man in Genesis 2-7 who was lifeless, who was doing nothing and he appeared unto them and he said to them, receive you the Holy Ghost and he breathed upon them. It was by the breath of the spirit that man became a living soul. It was by the breath of the mouth of Jesus in John 2021 20, that the first baptism of the Holy Spirit took place and that began to set their minds on what they were called to do. Secondly, the 
The Bible said that in the book of first, um, Sons of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 4. Can you project it media? I'm talking about why do you need the impartation of the Spirit at this point? Draw me. We will run after thee. The king had brought me into his chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in thee. We will remember thy love more than wine. Any man that God must use to save a generation must first of all be cornered by God. Be brought to a place where it is only you and God. As a matter of fact, when God wants to visit a people, he sends a man to them. God wanted to create about 7.9 billion people. He created a man, Adam. God wanted to call a people for a covenant. He called Abraham. And all he did that aligned with that. God wanted to fulfill his word unto Abraham concerning his seed. He sent a man to Egypt, Joseph, to go prepare for them. When God wants to save a people, when God wants to visit a generation, God sends a man to them. A man empowered by God. Where we just read, say, he said, draw me. How many people were drawn? One person. Draw me. We will run. One person drawn. Many running after. Child of God, there are benefits. There are realms of glory. There are seasons of manifestation that people connected to you might not step into until you allow the Lord to draw you because it is in your light that they will see the light of God. There are troubles that will not be solved in a family until God draws one person. And the whole family lines up behind the person. And I said it earlier. Anyone seated here this morning is a priest called by God for a specific assignment. The assignment could be to end a particular pattern in your family. And that is why God gave them you. It could be to end a particular sickness in an environment and God planted you in that environment. So, if God should look for who to blame for salvation not coming to his people, he does not go to the we that ran after you. He will come after the me that he drew. So, that means it is in the place that you are drawn, in the place of your fellowship, in the place of your communion, that impartation of grace now comes upon you, that when they see the grace of God upon your life, you begin to fulfill the scripture that said, ye are the salt of the earth. Ye are the light of the world. They are seeing your light. You are adding seasoning. You are, you are seizing their lives. You are beautifying the environment. Your presence is changing things. Your, your absence, whenever you are not around, it is obvious that something is missing. Draw me and we will run after you. And I ask us a question this afternoon. How well have you fulfilled your priestly call? It has nothing to do with gender. It has nothing to do with age. How well have you fulfilled your priestly call in your home? in your environment, in your workplace, wherever you find yourself. Because God is counting on you. The gospel that we preach, I don't preach prosperity. I don't preach healing. I don't preach deliverance. I don't preach whatever. I preach the kingdom. When the kingdom is preached, people are says healing. When the kingdom comes in the midst of people, breakthrough happens. You cannot take an aspect of a kingdom and build a sub-kingdom out around that. No. You'll be functioning in error. What did Jesus say? He said, until the gospel of the kingdom 
is preached to all nations. The gospel of the kingdom. So in preaching the gospel of the kingdom, we bring healing. We bring deliverance. We bring prophecy. We bring restoration. We bring all kinds of the things that people will run after. But what shall it profit the kingdom if one is made rich and he uses his wealth to fight the kingdom? That means it wasn't kingdom that empowered that world. Where I come from, that is the reason why the church struggles to control politicians. Because we did not preach kingdom to politicians. They got there by whatever they did. So they knew how they got there. And because they got there by themselves, we struggle to correct them. We struggle to call them to order. See, if I am a representative of the kingdom in government, it means that God's mandate is my first priority. And anything against that, I stand in opposition. Because I am an agent of the kingdom. Until the kingdom of God is preached to all nations. And that is the message that we bring to you. And this is who we are. We are people of the kingdom. So God wants us to come so close to him. When we pray, Lord, thy kingdom come. It is a prayer of indictment. Because who are you counting on to bring that kingdom in that environment? It is you that is making the prayer. So if the kingdom is not established in that environment, you being a member of the kingdom, you will be asked, the territory given to you to occupy for the Lord, what did you do to that territory? Is a kingdom now seen in that territory? Is a kingdom now being established? Are men beginning to align with the will of God in that territory, in that environment? So that's what I mean when I say it's a prayer of indictment. Because you are telling yourself, Lord, let your kingdom come. But sit back and ask yourself, who will the Lord use? Who will the Lord use to establish that kingdom? And that is why we must allow ourselves to be drawn so that many for the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above the hills and men shall stream men shall stream you know stream talks about flowing right does stream flow against a slope eh? but there is something about the exalted mountain that pulls stream to it you are a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden when you are placed up there it does not matter the topography. The nations will stream to you because you are representing the kingdom. So why we must seek the impartation of the spirit of God is because there are generations, there are, there, are, there are destinies tied to us. You know, I have had to Sometimes I was preaching some meetings, go home really, really, really sober. Not because I didn't do what I was supposed to do. But you find yourself praying, someone walking into an environment where you are teaching, where you are ministering sick. And you pray that the person does not get healed. No man is a healer. But I asked myself, you know, one of my friends told a very pathetic story. He was walking into a fellowship. By the gate of the fellowship, there was a crippled man. And the Lord said to him, pray for him. He turned left and turned right. Me. I've never done it before. Pray for someone that is crippled. He just composed himself and walked in into the meeting and joined the meeting. When they finished the grace and came out, people gathered by the gate. They were shouting, rejoicing. The man was walking. What happened? Another person was passing by, not going to the fellowship. And the Lord said to the person, pray for this man. If you receive an instruction to minister grace, to any, I, always, I always tell people, no man is the healer. No man is the healer. It is my responsibility to pray for the sick. It is God's responsibility to heal the sick. If the sick is not healed, go settle it with him. But my part must be done. I must do my part. 
that my family is in bondage and I'm the only one prospering. Is that really a testimony? That every member of the family depends on you for financial assistance and you are doing so well because of the grace of God upon your life and you are doing so well. Brethren, if you have seen the light, upon you is released a mandate to draw men to the light. Yeah. One thing I've learned about healing grace, let me teach you one in Nigeria, we call it Expo. If you are a healing minister, and by the mercies of the Lord, God has delivered you from an infirmity. Go everywhere looking for people that are plagued with that sickness. Because you have been empowered above that sickness. Yes. And that is why I don't pray twice for people that have ulcer. All I need to do is to say ulcer go and ulcer goes. Yes. Because I had, I had my own share of the pain. And you know the kind of ulcer that after taking drugs, you're fine. You stop taking drugs, it comes back. So the cycle just continues. And I know, I don't know how others survive, but the life of a man that is called for a generation is a man that must deny himself self. And one of those things we deny ourselves is food. Don't anything will deceive you, telling you that Jesus has fasted for you. Even Jesus fasted. So if he fasted for 40 days, how do the math? If Jesus, the son of God, did 40 days. Okay. So, what I did was to, since I knew that God's call upon my life is connected to fasting. So each time I fast, the ulcer comes back. What I did was to declare endless fast in ulcer. Three days into the fast, the, the pain was so terrible so unbearable but i continued so i continued fasting until i wasn't feeling the pain again and all that i came by fasting left by fasting please don't try this at home <laughs> hear from the lord <laughs> hallelujah you are drawn that men might run after you and see the glory of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 26 says, that's the top point I want to make. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit, KJV says Spirit itself, or that translation says Spirit himself. Yeah, because the Spirit of God. But the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, my emphasis is likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. If we are not helped by the Spirit of God, we are plagued by infirmity. Even when doctors do not find any physical ailment. I just hope you understood what I said. If the Spirit of God does not help you, you are plagued by infirmity. The Bible said, the Spirit himself helps our infirmities. So seeing that the natural state is a state of infirmity, we must anchor ourselves on that which is higher than the natural. And it is the Spirit that helps our infirmities. Which means, naturally, I would want to compromise to rise in the place of work. That is an infirm situation. That is a man that is sick. Physically okay, but weighed on the balance of the spirit. Terribly sick. It is at that point that I tell the spirit of God, say you know that if you do not help me, I will mess up. And because I am drawing men along with me, if I mess up, there is a generation coming after me will be so disappointed and discouraged that he that once preached the kingdom has become a mockery to the kingdom. Help my weakness. Help my weakness. You know, as a bachelor that prayer, I, I used to pray. I usually tell God, Lord, as I, whenever I move into a new house, I say, as I move into this house, Lord, the day my conviction on sexual purity will fail me, Help my infirmity. I might not be as strong as you are, 
for he helped me all through. Say, the day this flesh will want to rise above the spirit, please, dear spirit of God, help my weakness. I don't know how you fight through the weaknesses of life, but I am proffering a solution to us. It is by the spirit that we fly high. It is by the spirit that we'll overcome. You are here listening to me this morning, child of God. And you are struggling in one aspect of your life. You are struggling to be faithful to your partner. And I mean your wife, not someone that are living in the same house you're not married to. You are struggling to stand for the kingdom and what the kingdom represents. There is a helper. He helps our infirmities. He helps our weaknesses. He knows that we are weak. Have you wondered why the temptation to collect bribe comes when you don't have money? So that you can run to him and say, help me. If you have money, you will reject it on your own. But God does not want you to take glory in living for him. God wants to ensure that you lean on him for every victory. So in the face of that trouble, you are so vulnerable. You don't know what to do. If you listen carefully, you will hear a wind voice telling you, come, I will help you. You can go through this. I will help you. If your marriage is not working, he helps even in marriage. He makes marriages work. If your business is crumbling and you've exhausted all the ideas on rebuilding your business, it's not working, run to him. He's the helper of our infirmities. He helps our weaknesses. If you are called into ministry and you are not making impact, you are plagued by an infirmity, run to him. He will help you. He knows the button to press and you begin to fly. But sometimes we are just too busy. Remember I said something when I was starting. I was not told how long the elders waited. So maybe when he comes to help, he discovers that you have walked away to help yourself. Can you just pray one minute? Tell him, help me. Can you ask him to help your infirmity? I don't know the area of your life you need his help. Can you ask him to help you? Maybe what you took years to build is beginning to crumble. Cry out for help. Jesus, thou son of David, help me. Blind Bartimaeus cried out, have mercy on me. Are you gradually sinking? You are sinking. It's obvious that you are sinking. And there is nothing to hold on to in your sinking state. Cry out to him. Help. We need your help, oh God. It is by the empowerment of the Spirit, the impartation of the Spirit. The burden that you are called to bear is heavy. It will break your shoulder. And dislocate your waist if you bear it alone. We are not called to run this race mechanically. We fly on the wings of the spirit. Help me, O God. Do you know it is a breath of God that will give you visibility in your ministry? You have been doing great works, but behind the scene, if he breathes upon you, men will come running after you. He helps our infirmities. And because he helps our infirmities, in the place of prayer, he comes and rearranges our prayer point and tells us what to pray. So we don't know what to pray as the earth, but he helps our infirmities. He prays for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. It tells you, child of God, you think you need connection? No, what you need is not connection. What you need is relocation. He moves you to the right place. He helps our infirmities. My help, I 
has come. As I begin to round up, for us to effectively communicate the ministry, the gospel of the kingdom, we need the help of the Spirit. We need the help of the Spirit. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power i always say this there are people that will not believe our gospel until they see that we science cannot prove they will not believe us mm. there are some people that will not believe you until they see that that beat the imaginations of man paul said i have not come to make noise I have come by the power of the Spirit and the demonstration of His power to demonstrate the Spirit's power. I have not come with enticing words of men's wisdom. Philosophies of men cannot transform a life. It can get you excited. The gospel of the kingdom does not excite. It transforms. Yeah. Because most times, after we get excited in a program, as you are leaving the door, the excitement fizzles out. But when your life is transformed until your dying day, that encounter becomes a reference point. You will be like Jacob, who was still leaning on the staff while he was blessing his children, as Hebrew chronicled it. Because he never recovered from the encounter of Peniel. It leaves a mark on your life. It leaves a mark on your life. That is the gospel that we preach. We have not come with enticing words, Paul said. And you begin to ask yourself, how did Paul get to this level? How did Paul get to this level? If you read the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, where the Lord encountered Paul, and he became blind, and God spoke to him and asked him, why are you persecuting me? He asked God two questions, which God responded to. But what marvels me was the sequence of the question Paul asked God. Paul asked God two questions. Lord, who are you? Secondly, what would you have me do? Many Christians have missed it in life because they asked, who will you, what will you have me do? Before finding out who was speaking to them. It is in your knowledge of God that you know what God wants you to do. Ah! If we don't know him enough and take off like a jet, a time comes when the troubles of life will hit us and our knowledge gap will be exposed and you begin to see. Because our call is to build line upon line, precept upon precept. If you miss any precept, a knowledge gap has been created. In future, it will come back to haunt you. Find out who is calling you before looking for what to do for him. Who are you, Lord? When God, Jesus finished speaking to him, he now asked him, what will you have me do? Hmm. Having a revelational knowledge of God. It is when you know him that you don't struggle to do things. If you don't know him, doing things will become a mechanical thing. You, in fact, you will force things to happen. Hallelujah. You know, the, the last city I lived in Nigeria before I came over here. There was a time that there was a period where, where people were creating all kinds of, were making things happen in the name of ministry. You know, faking miracles until what happened, wanted to raise the dead on the day of resurrection. The person died real, like, finally died. Five... <laughs> Money had already been paid. But for the day the man of God was to resurrect him, they brought the casket. They opened the casket. Did cry like the prophets of Baal. The, till the next day, the man did not come back to life. They took him to mortuary. 
Yes, the man died. Every day is for the thief. <laughs> we don't make things happen. We align with him and things flow. You know, any person that boasts on creating miracles, watch again. We don't have the power. No, we don't. It is by the wings of the spirit. And if he does not do anything, I go back home and still thank him. For no man shall take this on unto himself. That is the reason why he will not give you what it takes to create it on your own. Because you will want to say, my hand has done it. And each time any man puts himself in a position to contend with the throne of God, he reduces you to an animal, a beast. Go ask Nebuchadnezzar. His glory will he not share with any man. Because he's God all by himself. So Paul asked him, what will you, who are you? I gave him instructions, go into the city of Damascus, you will meet. And, asked, and after that, the next thing we heard about Paul, it was, and it was Galatians that captured it, that he went to the wilderness of Damascus, uh, wilderness of Arabia, and spent about three years. What was he doing? Knowing the Lord. By the time he showed up again, he tried to convert to them the things he received. And he was jumping and he said, some of the things I heard when I was there, I even lacked the appropriate vocabulary to make you understand. I will not talk about them. Which means all of Paul's encounters were not recorded. There were things that Paul himself took, took to heaven. I want to be there. I want to be there. Let's rise on our feet. Shabra Lakoskitaya. I don't know how much of this grace that is functional upon your life but can you ask the Lord for a fresh encounter with him I actually have only one prayer point for the fasting period all I've been asking the Lord every day is, Lord, I just want to have an encounter with you. You cannot, you cannot stand before the challenges of tomorrow with yesterday's encounter. No. That was why when it became obvious that someone would need to stand before the Philistines and kill Goliath, David was anointed king. Yes, we all know. First Samuel chapter 16. He was anointed king. Chapter 17, he killed Goliath. But he was not king. He never ruled. Until 2 Samuel chapter 2, when there was problem in the kingdom, and the elders of Judah came to him and said, you'll be our king. And they anointed him king at Hebron. Second anointing. The first did not take him to the throne. But the first was the beginning of the journey. At every phase, at every junction of your work with God, Ask him for a fresh encounter. There is something new God wants to reveal to you. Second Samuel chapter 5. The whole Israel now came to him. Both Judah and Israel now say, you are our brother. The bone of our bones. Become our king. Three times he was anointed king. And when David was not anointed again, he made the greatest error of his life by sleeping with Bathsheba. And his lineage never recovered from it. Ah, you're going to ask the Lord this moment. Fresh oil. Man of God, can you just come forward? I just got that signal now to pray for you. Rakato shataya halados kataya ha. Ebra lagados kebalados kataya ha. Their father. Shalabarakatos kataya ha. So get behind him, get behind him. Lord, you told me that there's an impartation that is coming upon him that will transform him and his ministry. Now receive it. Take it in the name of Jesus. You're going to ask the Lord. Keep him on the ground. Keep him on the ground, sir. Just keep him on the ground. I don't know what you desire. The level of grace. You can't do this on your own. That's my emphasis you cannot. Can you ask God for that grace? 
for that unction. Can you ask the Lord for that fresh oil? When you recover, you just come back. We need you for another two minutes. In recent time, you have been dreaming where God is using you. You've been dreaming about it. You've seen yourself stand on platforms to communicate the kingdom to people. You've been, you, it's been part of you for some time. You're asking questions, what is happening to me? Can you just step forward? I want to pray for you. If you're one of those people, just step forward. God spoke to me clearly about that. There's one more person in the congregation. There's one more person. Can you lift up your two hands unto the Lord? Shabra Katos Katayaha. Their father. Their father. Their father. You told me that you will impact these wounds with unusual grace. There's someone in the congregation, you used to walk the very strange healing anointing. But you can't find it. Can you join them? You can't find it again. It's like the grace. You are asking yourself, has the grace been taken away from you? Can you join these ones in front? Now let that impartation that you need for the next level, let it come upon you. Their father, receive it. Shala Katos Kataya. Let the impartation come upon you. Impartation of the spirits. Let the grace, let the spirit of man pull you from the pit of life and bring you to the glory he ordained for you. In Jesus' name. Bear Holy Spirit. Oh my God. Oh my God. The Lord said, release those prophetic songs. He said, release those prophetic songs he has put in your mouth. Mashakat, and as you declare them, nations will hear you. As you declare them, kingdoms will hear you. In the name of Jesus. Their Holy Spirit, I ask, as men that you that so desire, can you not lift up your hands if you don't mind as I'm as I round up? Did you join them? Their Father, I saw that garment again. I saw that prophetic garment again. Now let the rest of you take it in the name of Jesus. If you are asking and believing and trusting the Lord for that one encounter that changes a man's cross, be it in ministry or in business, just lift up your hands unto the Lord. The grace is coming upon you wherever you are. Just yet fullness, fullness. The season of your fullness has come. The season of your fullness has come. The season of your fullness has come. In the name of Jesus. Marakato Shakatayaha. The Lord said that the transformation that is bringing to you by His grace. Can you clap your hand? You, their Father, oh Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive that encounter. Receive that encounter now, 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 now. In the name of Jesus. And I pray for everyone. Are you striving against the flesh? And you are asking the Lord for the grace to overcome. This is the moment for you. Anoskin daya, anakos kataya, ibarakatos kataya, azanda la barakatos kataya, halados kataya, hakada ya halabos kataya, lekata shatala baladosia, mashaka kataya halabos kata, 
Empowerment is coming. Rashata Labala Dosata. Le Prakato Sekete. La Shaka Palakato Sakata. Ibra Le Kato Shandalaya. Ah, Mashanaya, Manako Sataya. Le Prakato Seketea. Le Shadana Dabo Sataya. Ah, Marakata Sakata. I don't know what you want to pull from God now. Raise your voice and pull it from Him. Rakade Sataya. E Prokoto Seketaya. Ima Shandaya. La Shandaya. La Shandaya. Le Prakato Seketaya. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. La Shandaya. And I saw the fire of God rest upon you. I don't know what you deserve from him. Maracatos Kataya. There is impartation of grace. There is impartation of grace. Makasuku Pale Kataya. I heard the Lord say, Welcome to the season of supernatural. You have been asking for it. You've been asking for it. Take in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit. Azuna le brada dos kataya ha. Azu brada gados kataya ha. Leke te reke te rakatosa kata. E barakatosa kataya ha. Lagada barakatosa kataya ha. Makata rakataya ha. Labala kataya ha. Leke yeke de barakatosa kapa la kataya ha. Lakata barakata shakataya ha. In the name of Jesus. There is someone in the last one week, three times you have woken up praying in tongues. Three times in the past one week, you woke up praying in tongues. You can't understand what is happening to you. If you're the person, can you come forward? Ma, oh, shade brakos kataya ha, lekato sakataya ha. What I saw was fire. What I saw was fire. Ma, rakato sakataya ha. Ah, ma shataya. And I saw the hand of the Lord turn a book to a new page. I saw the hand of the Lord turn a book to a new page. He just turned it to a new page. Ma, a new season is born for you. A new season is born for you. Harana kus kataya. I saw that hand flip it to a new page. He supra le kanano sataya. He kosi la ma shata. Kosi ibra le kate sekete. Shalapa rakato sakata. Rakate sekete. Rakapa shataya. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There are three people. The Lord said you have healing grace upon your life. But you are beginning to doubt it. Because you, you, you want to really verify that this grace is functional upon your life. You are beginning to doubt that you once received that grace. If you are among them, can you come forward? I'm sorry I'm doing this I'm, and, and laying hands on people. It's just how I'm being inspired by the Lord. Please trust me. That's one. Two more people. You're asking yourself, is this really real? And you're looking for, how can I really prove that this grace is upon my life? Please don't, don't let this opportunity pass you by. Please, if I start praying, you can step back. But if you're among them, please join them. Come forward. Any one person. I'm sorry if I'm being too personal. Zula Katuskaya. Hakada Barakatusa Katayaha. As you are stepping out, I saw the glory of the Lord overshadow you. I saw that glory just come upon you. Father, 
Makashata labarakato satayaha. And I ask, oh God, that from today, your gift will find expression. In the name of Jesus, from today, your gift will find expression. Makato shadarabos katayaha. Masanta labarakato satayaha. From today, your gift will find expression. From today, your gift will find expression. Oh, Jesus. There is someone. Very recently, you had a vision of an angel. You saw an angel. You saw an angel and it was so real. It was, it was, it was so real, you know, the way it was described. You and you woke up, you came out of that terrified. It's not only him, that's that's one more person. Please come forward. God wants to do something. Something that is eternal. Something that is eternal. Please. If you are the person, please join me. Makos kataya, eshata raba kato sata, ebara kato sakete yaha, e kato sakata yaha. There's a transformation going on. There's a transformation. I don't need to touch you. There's a transformation. Makat, he said that Allah ah, push. He said that angel is coming back, and this time around he's coming with a clear message. You did not understand what happened to you before, but this time he's coming with a clear message. Rashaka pala kataya. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Ah, makos kipala na kosataya, ibarakato sataya ha. Let the Lord wash your eyes. Let the visions of heavens become clear to you in the name of Jesus. Harana ma sataya, hana makos sataya ha, ebrakato sakataya ha. The Lord said He's renewing your oil as an intercessor. He said, Oh Jesus, I'm sorry. But it's not only her. As I was saying, the Lord said it's not only her. It's not only her. Dear Holy Spirit. Dear Holy Spirit. There are four other people. That you have this ministry of being an intercessor but in recent time you are gradually getting weak in the place of your altar can you join her let the other four please join her <laughs> Akada barakato zakapala kataya lakato shakataya ha lakado rakato sakataya ha da bos kataya ha bo kata shataya ha lekada barakata father I ask oh God let that mantle come afresh let that mantle come afresh let that mantle come afresh the Lord is saying you will not just only pray you have been praying like just praying but now he said, I will begin to communicate with you, giving you clear instructions. He said, from today, I will begin, you begin to hear my voice clearly. You know, such conviction that you are ready to risk your life concerning what you have heard, because it's so true. Father, let that grace, mashallah, I receive it now, 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 now. Take it in the name of Jesus. Go and stand in the gap. Haramakatos katayaha. Let the oil of your altar be renewed. Let it be renewed by the Spirit. Let it be renewed by the Spirit. Let it be renewed by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. The Lord said the signs you've been asking for, you begin to see them from today. Oh, Jesus. But a sign in your life and sign in the lives of people you are praying for. So you begin to see the signs. 
thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' name. Father, we return all the glory to you. We return all the praise to you. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. Under this atmosphere, release your faith. If you are sick in any part of your body, if you are sick in any part of your body, someone is dropping in hella after today. Because the Lord has healed you of that asthma. Hakato Sata. Hey, para hakato sakataya. I release your faith. Rakato sakataya. Lekato sekete rekata. Ibralakato sakata. Lasha kabarakato sakataya. Ibralakato sakabarakata. Lasha darabarakato sakataya. Masha dayaha. Lekada, you are healed in the name of Jesus. You are healed in the name of Jesus. You are healed in the name of Jesus. You connected to the testimony I shared about being healed of ulcer. I release that healing grace upon you. I command that ulcer pain to cease in Jesus' name. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Put those hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen. Um, don't judge me for taking your time. Please. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. But I would prefer begging you to go back to God to start explaining why I did not obey him. So thank you for your understanding. And I will not promise that it will not happen again. I'm sorry. God bless you mightily. And let's meet at 11 p.m. this night. Please don't miss it. Don't miss it. God bless you. Hallelujah.